This is a Bell & Gossett PL36 circulating pump or booster pump. We're going to replace the mechanical seal in here which decided to leak. You can go to the internet, download instructions on how to rebuild one of these. These are all PL series pumps. The seal mechanism will be similar in all of them. Take a little bolts out of here. Remove the pump housing. We need to take this impeller off of here. Go in on this back side and you can see the fan in here. You want to carefully put a screwdriver in there to engage with one of these fins so the other side of the screwdriver will be against this casting and be careful not to damage any of those copper windings in there. You can just turn this off by hand. This face plate holds part of the seal mechanism. You can get hold of the seal itself and just wiggle it off of the shaft if you can. And I think I can see why this pump started leaking. The spring had collapsed and broken, so it lost its compression on the mechanical seal. We're going to replace all of those parts, and what I need now is a spring. But because that spring was broken and in there, wedged in there at an angle, it has probably damaged that seal in any case. As long as this shaft is still in good condition, we can put another seal in there. This cover plate's made of stainless. I've cleaned it all up nice and shiny. Cleaned up the inside of the pump body. Made sure all these grooves where the gasket's going to seat are free of any corrosion or debris. After I washed this, I put it in the oven about 200 degrees for about 20 minutes to make sure it was good and dry. This is going to sit as a spare part on the shelf. So I went ahead and I wiped the inside of this with a very light coat of oil just so it wouldn't rust. Now, what are we doing? We have a pump with a rotating impeller inside. And this backing plate goes on here like this. We want to seal everything inside this pump with as few moving parts as possible. And the impeller is going to be spinning on this shaft. We're going to have a stationary seal that goes in here. And we'll have a rotating seal on this shaft that's spring-loaded. The stationary seal is pressed inside this rubber cup, which in turn is pressed inside this faceplate. The rotary seal has a highly polished surface that runs against the stationary seal. This is made out of a carbon material. This is usually made out of a stainless or ceramic. This appears to be a ceramic or possibly even a carbon material itself. Rotary seal gets an O-ring pressed inside, which seals on this shaft. This backup ring pushes against the O-ring to keep it compressed against the shaft. And it's being pushed and compressed by this spring, which also maintains pressure of the rotary seal against the stationary seal. And then you have the spring cage, which engages with these notches on the rotating seal and keeps it rotating at motor speed. This is all compressed together when you screw the impeller onto the motor shaft. I'm going to put just a little bit of soapy water on this stationary seal with its rubber cup and gently but firmly press that into the recess of the face plate. And we'll dry off that excess moisture. The face plate goes against the motor body. A little bit of soapy water on that O-ring. And on this shaft, put a little bit on that surface. Very carefully install that on the motor shaft. The backup ring will push the O-ring into that rotating seal. The spring pushes against that backup ring. And the spring cage 
will go on here so that the fingers fit into the groove of the rotating seal. I need to install the impeller which pushes against the spring cage. I want to insert a screwdriver in the back portion of the motor to engage with one of the cooling fan fins and be real careful as we continue to screw the impeller onto the shaft. You want to make certain that the spring cage fingers engage with this rotating seal. This is a carbon seal. It's very easy to break. So you want to make sure that everything goes in there just nice and smooth and easy. You can see those fingers are engaging. Keep pushing down till that impeller is on there snug, just hand tight. And now that rotating seal is moving with the motor shaft. This gasket now goes on here and we put the pump housing back on the motor. Your directions will tell you to always keep your junction box on the top. You can orientate this pump housing in any direction you need. And that's so that if you do get a leak, the fluid will find its way out the bottom of the pump and will stay out of the motor windings in the junction box. I put the screws back in, tighten the bolts just enough to compress that seal so they won't somehow vibrate loose. There we have a pump. It's had a new mechanical seal installed and it's ready to be placed back in service.